We're bringing you that on NFL Network around noon, so keep it here for that. Uh, guys, if you could be at that press conference mm. and stand up there, and maybe like Aditi could go hit the vending machine for a second because she's been working so hard with this team the past couple of days, what is the one thing you would stand in and ask Mike Tomlin? Look at the eight job openings in the NFL right now, and I have a pretty good feel for the pulse of the league, and there is no slam dunk candidate. I think eight teams fired their coaches, and there wasn't anything in the back pocket where like, okay, well, we're firing our coach because we're hiring. I think teams are sort of scrambling right now. I mean that. I now, what do you I'm, mean by that, though? What I mean is that there is no slam dunk. Here's Kyle Shanahan, Josh McDaniel. Here are these Daniel, guys. That like, just because you fire a coach doesn't mean you have the right candidate in mind. Multiple teams right now are doing an open search for coaches without one that they t- particularly have in mind or someone they're... De- with that in mind, I would look at Mike Tomlin and I would say, Coach, do you want to do this anymore with the Steelers? Because there are eight other openings that would line up. He would be the yes. bell of the ball. Talk if about Mike it. Tomlin was to step away and say, you know what? It's been 12 years. We've got the Super Bowl ring. Eight I don't, playoff appearances. Do I need this? Do I want this? Between Ben and Antonio, between Le'Veon, between all of the drama that goes on and all of the scrutiny that he is under, would it not be a, 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 a very interesting thing for Mike Tomlin to be the one to say, you know what, Ooh. why don't I leave? Why don't I just be the one and I'll take a job in Arizona. I'll mm. take a job in Tampa. I'll be the next Jets coach. Ooh. Hey, I'll go to Denver. I'll go win with those guys and I will leave this mess behind. Mike Tomlin's not a quitter and the Steelers do not fire coaches. So no, is that going to happen? Probably not. But I would ask Coach Tomlin in all genuine honesty, do you want to do this anymore? Mm-hmm. Do you want to deal with this anymore? And if not, where's next? Mm -hmm. I love that. Great question. They would be lining up to get him, too. I think so. Yes. I mean, the playoff appearances, what he's able to do in Pittsburgh, he would get a drop immediately. All right. So for me, I would sit there. I'd raise my hand slowly. I'd say, Coach, be honest. Why are your star players so unwilling to commit? You know, I come from an era where when you sign your contract, you did everything you can for the organization. Blood, sweat, tears. They tell you when to show up. You show up. They tell you when to lift, you lift. They tell you, tell you when to practice, you practice. They tell you to show up for the game, you show up for the game whether you're playing or not, and you support your team. Over the last couple of years, we've seen their quarterback talk about retirement as if it's around the corner. We've seen their star running back, Le'Veon Bell, say, I need you to pay more. The commitment isn't there. We've seen their star receiver at times look like he's not fully committed to the program or not committed to buying in. Now, coaches say it all the time. If you buy into what I'm selling, we're going to be great. What if the guys don't buy in? Oftentimes, when you hear about guys not buying into teams, it's usually the third string dude that's making crumbs, and he's not going to be on the team next year. It's never your starting quarterback, Mm. your starting running back, and your starting receiver. So for me, I say, hey, coach, just give it to me. Why are they so unwilling to commit to this organization? And I'm not even saying it's on timeline. Maybe it's something within the staff. Maybe it's something within the front office. Maybe it's something within the team. Mm. I have no idea. And the reason I'm asking because I want to know. These are all good questions. I, I would just say, uh, Coach Kyle Brandt, good morning football. Uh, what did you think of Bird Box? I, well, no, um, I would uh, kind of echo what you guys are saying. Kind of a different variety of Peters. I would say, why should you be the Steelers head coach moving forward? Why? I know the Steelers don't fire coaches. Why do you deserve to have this job? We just witnessed a collapse. A huge collapse from 7-2-1 to not making the playoffs. Baseball manager does that, he's out of there. Why should you get to stay? Under your watch, the vaunted Pittsburgh Steelers have become the most melodramatic team in all of football. The fans want to know, why is the team embarrassed with the way you manage the clock? Why is the team embarrassed with the way you have challenges? Why did your kicker miss 12 kicks and you kept them until the final week of the season? You'd be in the playoffs right now. That Oakland loss was terrible. The Denver loss was terrible. The Cleveland tie was terrible. So do you just get to ride out in perpetuity? Because I can't expect anything different than the exact same Steelers next year. Good players, good wins, not enough. So when does it end and I would love to know you why should you continue to be the head coach this great position you're in Nate you always say that when Tom is at the podium he's the best at answering things without actually answering them yeah he has a great Obama vibe yes and I've been there as coaches and players sometimes you got to give the cliche and you got to talk around people Bill Belichick is the best at it Mm mm-hmm if a so guy's a prima, donna, a prima donna, can you control that? Like, to me, is it the coach's fault that Antonio Brown's wearing a fur coat on the field before the game? Could and Belichick handle him differently? Belichick, I don't, I don't know. Like, if Antonio Brown is in, in New England, is he a different guy? Like, to me, they won nine games. They win ten games every other year. They miss the playoffs. And I hear what you're saying, and it's very fair if he was to be, you know, showing the door, like, hey, we just need to start something new. Yeah. 
but I also I don't want to put all the pressure I don't on think, the coach. I, I don't think, think we're players, blaming. None of us are blaming. I know we're not. I'm saying nationally and in Pittsburgh. He's oh, a lot of blame right oh, now. Oh, yeah, they're going after him. But I will say everyone's equal. At some point, these players do have to be held accountable. Take accountability, like, man. Who does that, though? The head coach, right? I mean, that's the guy. This is the Steelers. This, I'm sorry, it's not the Bengals. we got different standards here. We win Super Bowls or get out of here. The reason I asked you that is because I, do you expect him to answer anything today? Like, How, what, how, do, you, how do you think this goes? Yeah. He's going to answer some this, questions. This is the Titanic this year. Yeah. They were 7-2-1 and one and lost to the Broncos and the Raiders. Mm -hmm. Not good. We've got Adrian Amos set to uh, join the show. Safety for the, the Chicago Bears. We've got a big one at home against the Eagles, but let's check in with Will Selva first. He's out in the newsroom. In